So it's been a pretty long time since I last made a favourites video. And that's probably because I've just been slowing down and focusing on the stuff I already own. Trying to be the best I can with it and not really get too wrapped up into buying lots of things. However, there are a few things I've picked up recently which I'd like to talk about. And a few other things which I guess are sources of inspiration. So I guess it is about time I do another one of these favourite videos. And yes, for the keen-eyed, this is the Mamiya 210mm f4 lens. Maybe a better microphone holder than a piece of glass. Tripods have to be the least exciting thing to spend some money on. It's nowhere near as much fun as buying a new camera or lens. But I have to say, having a good tripod is such a game changer. And recently, I got this one from Peak Designs, which is their travel tripod. Uh, this one's in carbon fibre. And this thing, I underestimated it. The whole reason why I think this has been such a game changer for me, just the form factor. Having a tripod which folds down to this size, which fits in like a water bottle container on a backpack, has really freed me to having no excuses to go out and shoot, which has been really helpful for the new style of videos that I've been making. I guess I'll show you it folded out. Very quick, very, <laughs> very tripod. This bit goes up as well. Nice, nice ball head kind of just does everything you need it to do. It's not the tallest tripod in the world. You don't know how tall I am, so you can't really tell, but tripods are good. Off topic, I've been refining the art of pizza making. It's always good to have a hobby outside of your main thing. So maybe Gergo's Pizzeria coming soon. Mamma mia. Another thing which has been pretty integral to this new style of filming videos it's actually this microphone, and it's probably the thing that kicked all of this off. This is the uh, Rode Filmmaker Kit. It's pretty much just a wireless microphone that I can speak into, and it transmits to you over there on the camera. But this really allowed me to have the freedom to compose shots however I wanted to, and still be able to speak. So much more fun than just having like a filming set. Look at all this freedom. I could be anywhere. And in terms of favourite cameras, I haven't really bought a new one, I've just been using the RZ67 a lot. And I actually did my first proper shoot since lockdown with the RZ recently. I shot a clothing campaign for my friend's brand, and I think the photos came out really cool. So, here are a few of them. I think a lot of people, if you were to ask them to think about British photography, they'd be instantly led towards Martin Parr's seaside resort photos. Not very nice pictures of the UK, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, they're good photos, but they're, they're not, like, beautiful. And this is something which I often think about. However, recently, there's been a body of work from the 80s which has been republished, which is one of my favourite series of photos in the UK, and that is Paul Graham's A1. Paul spent two years documenting the new stretch of motorway in Britain that connected the south to the north in the early 80s. It's an amazing collection of portraits and interiors of cafes and roadside scenes. It's such a great book and really amazing to see these kind of photos of Britain. I definitely find this work way more inspiring than I do something like Martin Parr's photos. It's much more akin to the kind of photos that I want to make. So it's really nice to see them from a place close to home as opposed to the American South, for instance. There's one thing which has inspired me quite a lot that I watched recently, and that's a film. It's no ordinary film. It's a seven and a half hour long film about Hungarian farmers. 
Uh, the film in question is Satan Tango by Bella Tarr. How many other films have you heard of that are seven and a half hours long? Just when I heard that, it intrigued me, it piqued my interest, and that's, I guess, what kind of really made me want to watch it. That and the trailer being pretty awesome really persuaded me. The cinematography and the feel of it just really persuaded me to dedicate seven and a half hours of my day to watching this one mega film. And I think the thing which really interested me about it is what kind of freedom comes with that time frame. Being able to have multiple 10 minute shots, maybe even with no dialogue, really allows kind of the cinematography and the director to have as much freedom as they wanted. And this is all helped by the fact that it was shot on, I think, 35mm black and white cinema film and has recently been restored to 4K. It just looks incredible. I really recommend it. I think it's its cinematography has had a really great impact on me and maybe that's one of the reasons, among a few others, that this video is now in black and white. So, finally, thanks for watching this. I have to say, next week is probably the most excited I've been to film a video in a long time. I just really love the concept, so uh, stay tuned. Coming soon.